Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from round three uh, of the uh, of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Tournament. Uh, in the previous two rounds, uh, Alireza Firuzja uh, lost a game to Levon Arena, but also drew a game against Ding Liren from a seemingly completely lost position. And Hikaru Nakamura won in the first round against Sergei Karakin and drew in round two against Daniel Dubov. So now in round three, we have Nakamura versus Firuzja. And it is quite the game. So without further ado, let's check it out. Now, Kamura with the white pieces opens with uh, e4. Uh, sorry, <laughs> opens with d4. Uh, Firuja goes for knight to f6. We have knight to f3 and d5 now. And now, not going for the c4 uh, idea immediately, but first e3, the call system. Uh, we have e6 by Firuja, uh, for now a very, a very symmetrical, and b3 now. Hikaru plants the uh, Fianchetto, his dark square bishop over uh, over here, and then put the bishop on d3, uh, so both bishops will uh, uh, target the king's side. Uh, we have bishop to e7, and now bishop to b2. Uh, so just continuing development, uh, Firuja castles, and now bishop to d3. Uh, we have b6 now, Firuja also wants the Vienketo, his light square bishop, and Hikaru just castles. Uh, we have bishop to b7 and knight b to d2 now. Uh, preparing, uh, the, the rook might come to c1, uh, you can play c4, so it's a very, very natural development of pieces. Uh, we have c5 by black, also very natural, and now a3. Uh, we have knight to c6, and here uh, there is one game where knight to e5 was played, but here uh, Nakamura goes for uh, d captures on c5 right away. He unleashes the, the full uh, power and glory of the bishop pair. Uh, and it is as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So b captures on c5. By, the, by doing this early capture, he gives uh, Firuja a lot of control well, uh, over, over the central squares. Uh, and now c4. He doesn't want to uh, allow uh, Firuja to, to box in any of his bishops. Uh, but also if you go for d4 now to try and keep the dark square bishop out of commission then just captures captures and for the moment you do have a pawn on d4 but it's uh, hard to say for how long as there are a lot of pieces attacking it the queen is sort of extraying at b4 b5 can be played to kick off one of the defenders so it's uh, very unclear so instead Firuja goes a5 he wants to play a4 uh, and now c captures on d5 with e captures on d5 and now queen to c2, putting some pressure uh, on the c5 pawn, but uh, also on the h7 pawn. Uh, we have a4 asking, do you want to capture here and then allow me to, to, to push c4? Also might be an idea, although it's very unclear after bishop to f5 uh, what uh, what will be black's plan here. But the, the doubled a pawn shouldn't be much of a problem for black. So Nakamura instead goes uh, rook a to d1, uh, just uh, continues development, and now a captures on b3. We have knight captures on b3, now Nakamura uh, captures uh, with a threat of just capturing uh, on c5 with the knight. Uh, and here you don't really get, uh, lose a piece with c4. If c4, uh, then white simply captures it as you're unable to recapture due to the pin. However, it's not a bad move uh, because even after bishop captures on c4, you have bishop captures on a3, captures, captures, and the game continues uh, with equal material. Uh, but instead, Firuja decided to defend the pawn with queen to b6, but this doesn't work. In fact, it's, uh, it doesn't work at all. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out what Firuja missed uh, while playing queen to b6. Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that uh, you can remove one of the defenders of the c5 pawn. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, and of course also the h7 pawn, uh, it's bishop captures on f6. Now, uh, if bishop captures, you not only win the h7 pawn, but also the c5 pawn. So here, uh, Firuja decided to go for g captures on f6, but now bishop captures on h7 with check. And his king side uh, kind of falls apart. Uh, so king to h8 and now knight to h4. Nakamura wants to bring the knight to f5 to put pressure on the bishop on e7. So knight to e5 by Firuja, getting the knight uh, to help out with the defense. Uh, but still knight to f5 as now the bishop is also undefended. Uh, and it's uh, very hard to, to, to find a move here. Uh, for example, if you capture the bishop, then just captures with check. Uh, and after you block the check with knight g6, now just knight captures on c5. is very strong. Uh, you want some material, and also there's a lot of pressure here. Uh, rook, to, uh, rook to b1 is the threat, and, uh, well, black is, black is completely lost here. Uh, but... Uh, 
Uh, th th there isn't, uh, um, well, th there are better moves, but not much better moves. Uh, Firuja played rook captures on e3, on a3. He decides to give up the e7 pawn for the b3 pawn, but uh, uh, the, <laughs> the the e7 knight, uh, bishop for the b3 knight. Uh, but Nakamura is not interested in this, rather he goes for the, uh, he immediately goes for the kill. Uh, so once again, pause the video and try to find the, the winning idea for white. Well, or rather the, the quickest winning idea for white. Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the, the mating idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to e2. And now there is no defense against queen to h5. Whatever you play, uh, you might try, let's say, queen captures on b3, the obvious reply, just queen h5, and the knight and bishop prevent the king from going anywhere. Next move, whatever black plays, doesn't really matter, it's just a quick checkmate. Bishop g6 check, king has to move, check, and now either queen g7 or queen to h8 will be checkmate. Uh, and other than that, you could try an g6, but still just uh, queen h5, and it's the same idea. The king cannot reach the g file, uh, just bishop. Uh, comes to g6 with or without capturing doesn't really matter and it's the same mating pattern so uh, after queen to e2 uh, Firuja decided to go for rook to a4 it's uh, unclear uh, as to why uh, it doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to be doing all that much uh, but okay probably maybe it was a mouse slip or something uh, but I doubt it maybe maybe he was just trying to keep an eye on the g4 square for some reason or something uh, but uh, all in all, Nakamura just went queen to h5, and it was in this position on move 21 that Alireza Firuja resigned the game. And uh, a brilliant victory for Hikaru Nakamura, uh, a 21 move victory in a, in a rapid game. So it was uh, all about that uh, queen to. Uh, queen to b6 move, which is which is very funny, uh, because if you think about it, after this knight captures on b3, you kind of instantly play c4. Even if you even if you blunder that, uh, you cannot recapture. I mean, uh, due <laughs> due to the pin, uh, but still, it's uh, it's the best move and the way to go. And of course, Alireza tried to improve on the best move and then blundered the game away. Uh, but it happens to everyone. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, so yeah, that's round three. We're going to check up uh, on a few more games uh, from, from the first four rounds and then we're going to check out the standings uh, before we head into, into the second day of the Lindores Abbey Rapid Tournament. So yeah, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Pratyush Sh Shahane, uh, Nicholas Zotalis, uh, Asger Triarker, uh, Paul Sonda, and JC Lopez for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Lindores tournament, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and of course, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.